In this tutorial, we are going to make a basic sprite frame animation in Pygame. And to illustrate the principle, we're going to take this little frog and animate it, which should be a quite straightforward thing to do. And to do all of this, we are going to use sprites in Pygame, which I just did a tutorial about in the last video. So check this one out if you are completely new to Pygame. And how I'm going to start with is this. That as usual, we start with importing Pygame and Sys. Then we have a general setup with initiating Pygame, creating the clock, controlling the frames per second with the clock. Then we have our main display surface, which I still called screen. Then we have our game loop down here and we draw all the stuff. The one slightly more advanced thing is that we already have a class called player that for now just draws a surface. It fills the surface, then it gets the rectangle and it positions the rectangle on the screen. And then later down here, we are adding this sprite to a sprite group and then we draw this one in the main game loop. So what we're getting for this one is a plain rectangle that doesn't really do anything. And I just put it here to save some typing. If you want more details about this, check out the last tutorial. So the animation is going to happen in this class. And before we program this, let's talk about how animations work, because that's quite important. An animation by itself is actually really simple. All you need are different images of the different stages of the animation. So in our case, for example, all we have are 10 pictures of the different frames of the frog animation. And if you play these fast after each other, our eye perceives this as a moving motion. Which is basically what any kind of two-dimensional animation is. You just draw lots of frames after each other and you play them fast enough so our eye interprets this as a movement. Basically any movie before 3D was made in that way. Although 3D movies do work in different ways. But that's a topic for a completely different thing. But that already illustrates what we need for our sprite to animate it. Essentially all we need is that we need to import lots of different images into our class and then cycle through them at a certain pace. And it is important to control how fast the animation is going to run. We are going to see that in just a second and we are going to talk about how to control the speed of the animation. It honestly isn't all that hard. The first step is to get all the animations into our class. Or let's say the first step is to get rid of the existing stuff we have because we don't need it. Yeah, we just don't really need it. And I'm going to start with creating self.sprites, which is just going to be an empty list. And into this list, I'm going to load 10 images. And I already copied all of these. It's going to look like this. So you don't have to watch me type all of this by hand. All we do is we take this group and we're going to append one thing. And that's going to be the image we are loading in. And I'm going to have pictures 1 to 10. And all of these images are in the same folder as the script. Otherwise, you would have to add some stuff here in the beginning to get the proper path towards your picture. And now we have 10 images in our sprite class. Now we need to figure out a way how to select a certain one at different steps of the animation. And the first step towards that is what I'm going to call current sprite. And by default, this is zero. And you're gonna see in a second why this one becomes important. Right now, actually. So when I select the actual image for this sprite, I wanna take self.sprite, so sprites, so this entire group, and I wanna select one of these, which is gonna be the index. And that's gonna be this sprite. So later on, we're gonna increase this number incrementally and then just cycle through this one by one. So I just wanna select self current sprite. So right now we're just selecting the first sprite. So by default, this is going to be our first standard image. And now we have our image. Now we just need to rectangle around it. So self.rect equals self.image.get rect. This works just as before. And now we need to position this rectangle with self.rect. And I place the top left, but place this however you want. And there's gonna be position x and position y. So now when we initiate this kind of class, we get a picture. And let's actually try this. This should be working already, except I made a typo. Now it should be working. Exactly, now we can see a picture of our frog. And it's moved too far to the right. So let me move it. I think if we just change it to 10 
10. This should look better. Yeah, exactly. This looks better. So we can see it's 10 pixels from the left, at least roughly. But it is quite a bit further from the top. The reason for that is that there's a lot of empty space above the frog. It was like that in the original piece of art and I didn't really change it. But that doesn't matter too much. Okay, now with our frog, let's start an animation. And to animate it, we need the update function. So dev update and self as usual. And to get this started, all we need is self dot current sprite. And this needs to be plus equals one. So in every frame, we just increase this number by one and then select whichever sprite we are using. So we start with this one, then we come to this one, this one, this one, and so on. So now we have an updated current sprite, but we also need to make sure that self.image gets updated as well. So self.image equals self.sprites dot self dot current image. The reason for that is that when we initiate this class, it uses number zero for the current sprite. But when we update current sprite, it already picked one. So we need to pick the image again. This would get us a start, but it would run into an error message really fast. But at some point we reach a number that's higher than this one and Python doesn't find the item in the list anymore. So what we need is that if self dot current sprite is greater or equal than the length of self dot sprites, then we want to self dot current sprite current sprite back to zero. And if you're running this thing now, this should be working. Except it's not, there's one thing I forgot. We are not calling this update method, which we have to do down here with moving sprites.update. And again, this update I have explained in the previous tutorial in quite a bit more detail. But basically what happens here is that when you call update on this group, it is going to call the update method on each sprite in that group. And if you run this now, now it should be working. Except you can already see why this isn't working. It is way too fast and also plays automatically. It doesn't play on button press. So let's work on these two things. The first one is going to be just pressing a button and then having it start there. And to get that one done, I first create some kind of input for the button press. So if event dot pipe equals pygame dot d down. What we want to do now is take our layer and I think I just call it animate. So we want to run a function that animates our frog once. So let's add this to this class now. And so I create def animate and it just needs self. And there are different ways to organize this. The way I went with is that this entire thing only runs when we have if self dot is animating equals to true. And this true is going to be set in the animate method. So self dot is animating equals true and by default is animating is false and I'm going to create this one up here is animating equals false and let me indent all of this and uh, yeah it looks good so basically what happens here is that by default self to animating is false so when python wants to update all of this it looks at this this is false by default so all of this is not being run so when we start the code it just picks the first sprite and then displays it as an image. Fair enough. Only when we press the animate function, then is animating is set to true. So in that frame, it is going to start running this animation. And we can actually try this now. And we get an error. Event type pi game. And that's an easy fix. So if I run the game now, if I press any button, now it runs perpetually. And there's no way for me to stop it. 
but I only want to play the animation once when I press the button. So let's implement this now. And the easiest way to implement this is in this if statement, because this one already tells us if the animation has finished running, because we know if the current sprite is greater than whatever index this one here is at, then the animation has finished. So once self current sprite is greater than the length, all we need is to add self dot is animating equals to false. So what basically happens now is that self dot current sprite, if this has gone through all of these, then we set self dot animating back to false. So this one stops running and we go back to the first sprite. So let's try this now. And yeah, if I press the button, it only runs once. So this one's working. And that brings us to the final part that we need to slow down the animation so it actually looks halfway decent. And there are lots of different ways to get this one done. And you could do something quite fancy by using pygame.time.getTicks and make specific timers. But I felt this is way too complicated and is overthinking the problem quite a bit. What we can do instead is something much simpler that gets you basically the same result. And basically what I'm going to do is use the int method to round numbers down. Basically, think of it like this. We want Pygame to paint the first picture, not just on one frame, but on let's say three to four frames. And then the second one also on three to four frames. And the problem we have right now is that Pygame increased current sprite by one. But how we're going to change this is that instead of adding one, we're only going to add something like 0.2 or 0.25 or 0.5. So current sprite isn't going to increase as fast anymore. And then we use this current sprite to pick from the sprites. We use the int function to turn this number into an int, which basically means that Python is going to round it down to the next number. So if we incremented current sprite by 0.2, we would end with 1, 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, and then 2. But if we run the int on it, anything from 1 to 1.8 is going to become 1. And anything from 2 is going to become 2. And then from 2, we can do the same process again. And this way, we basically keep on playing the same frame numerous times. So let's implement this, and I think this is going to make much more sense. So for current sprite, instead of incrementing this by 1, I want to increment this by 0.2. Which, for now, isn't going to work, because Python cannot pick the 0.2 index of self.sprites. So we need to change this one to int. of the current sprite. So if this one now is 0 0.2, so 0 plus 0 0.2 is going to be 0 0.2. If the int method gets its hand on it, it's going to turn the 0 0.2 into a 0. And you can get the index 0 of this number. But when this one runs again and we get to 0 0.4, then this one is still going to turn it into a 0. And it's only going to turn it into 1 after 5 frames. And that's basically it. If I run the game now, now we have a much slower animation, and that's all you really need to do. And now, if you change this number, you can get the animation speed that you want. And you can even make this even more adaptable. Let's just call it speed. And then we're going to call it speed here. And then down here, update speed. And I'm going to put 0. Point, let's say, 25. It's going to be a bit faster. Now we have a bit fast animation and it looks so much better. But if you wanted a fast animation, you could put this down to 0 0.5. Or if you want to go crazy, you could put something like 2. And that's going to look weird. You can barely see it. Or incredibly slowly. But I think 0 0.25 seemed like a good middle ground. Yeah, that seems nice. I hope this was useful and I'll see you around.